Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Higby and Associates. And actually, I'm not gonna be talking right here in front of the camera for the whole video. I'm gonna be going over to the computer with you in a moment and showing you what I found. So I found that this company has been engaged in, and this is, let me just point out a little disclaimer first, allegedly engaged in, and also, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a legal expert, I've been in the collections judgment recovery industry for uh, over 16 years now, and I specialize in defendant location work and uh, asset investigation, banks, employment, that type of thing. And I also have, uh, over the past couple of years, been teaching others from people in the collections field, private investigators, some law enforcement, and others how to do investigations. And if you're interested in that, you can view my page over at theskiptracer.com. Sorry for the shameless promotion. All right, so uh, Higby and Associates. Allegedly, they are involved in some shady practices or predatory practices, as one would say. And there, if you Google them, H-I-G-B-E-E, -E, hold on one second. Yeah, H I G. B, E, E, and Associates. And uh, from what I found online, they're involved in a lot of predatory practices. So basically, the what, what happens is that individual artists and companies that hold the rights to certain media uh, and stock photos and this and that will hire Higby and Associates to monitor their stuff and pursue if anyone violates their copyright, copyrighted works, as I understand it at least. And Higby and Associates will either use a program that they purchased or a third party service to go and run it occasionally and see, uh, do like image reverse or well actually image matching and find out who out there is using the image. And then they will send demand letters to that company. Now, it seems the way it works, and this is just from my own observations, it seems how it works is that what they'll do is they'll look at the company first, maybe their claims resolution department or someone within the department will look at the company and see, okay, well, this company, it seems their lowest amount they offer is a thousand, but this company is probably, you know, a very small company. They're probably not gonna be able to come up with much money. So we'll say a thousand dollars. However, this company over here, oh, they get some money. They, they, they get some assets, they get some money. It is worth going after them. So we'll say, $10,000 will be the minimum offer to settle. So they'll choose their offer to settle, allegedly choose their offer to settle uh, by the size of the company. Is That's how it appears from what I've been reading. And I've been reading a lot on this company. So uh, the heads of the company, uh, Matthew Higby, Melissa Clark, uh, Matthew Higby is showing, this is right on their company website. So I'm just going off this information. Uh, it's all public right off their website. Matthew K. Higby is the founding attorney. Melissa Clark, associate attorney. Ray, um, I'm not sure I pronounced last name, NGO, is attorney of counsel. Paul Hetch is the associate attorney. And it just goes on. There's more individuals, more attorneys. You can view this if you want at higbyassociates.com. Again, H I G B E E associates.com. So there's a lot of information on this company. I have not even spent an hour looking into the company, but from public records to like city and town public records, or well, city and state public records, excuse me, and county records, and uh, court records, federal records, cases, there's a lot. And then there's all the other stuff too. There's social media, and that's a whole other story in itself. I have found what I would consider to be very questionable transactions and items on social media that is the that's the nicest way i can put it um very questionable uh transactions and other such items and maybe we can go there in future videos i haven't decided if i want to do a video on that or not but what i want from you as you watch this video please put in the comments below if you've been contacted from higby and associates and you know as i said i'm not uh, all this is alleged information. This is as I'm finding it. I am not an attorney. I'm not a legal expert. Like I said, I have 16 years in the judgment recovery field, but that's it. I'm not an expert in any type of legalities or copyright infringement laws. So if you have any questions, I'm not going to be able to answer you. And if someone else answers you, examine the source. So 
Uh, that being said, though, if you have been contacted by them, please put so in the uh, in the comments. Put in the comments how your interactions went. Whether were they very polite? Were they very rude? Did you guys reach a settlement? Did you not pursue? Did they not pursue you? I'm really, really interested in hearing that. So please put that in the comments. And right now we're gonna go over the computer and we're gonna examine one case that I found. And it was actually a lawsuit against the, the uh, founding attorney, Matthew K. Higby. And we're going to examine that lawsuit and we're gonna see some of the information that we can find just by the lawsuit and how the company and how their client responded as well. Uh, and we're gonna look at that. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but we're gonna look at it and see what kind of information we can find on the company. So once again, any questions, any comments, if you've been contacted, please throw that in the comments below. And if I do more videos, if you guys request more videos, I will link these videos together in the description. Just go below and hit the see more button and you'll see the links of the other videos I do in the future if we do them. So without further ado, let's head on over to the computer. Okay, so here we are on PACER. Now, PACER, if you don't know, as it shows up here, is public access to court electronic records. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I know it'll be a little hard to see on screen. So I think that should be good, maybe. Okay, so PACER is public access to court electronic records, which means public access. Anyone under the sun can access PACER. You can do uh, any type of search that PACER allows you to do from federal criminal records to uh, civil filings, uh, so federal, criminal, you can do bankruptcy filings. So there's a lot you can do on PACER. You can't get everything, but there's a lot of things that you can get. So I actually have a course on PACER if you're interested. It's on Udemy. I will put that link in the description. Just go to the description, hit see more, and you'll see the link there. And I'll put that in. It's $50, and I do a three, approximately three-hour course on everything you need to know about using PACER. But the great thing is anybody under the sun can use it. You don't have to be an attorney. You don't have to be in the investigation field. Uh, you, can be, you can work anywhere. You can do anything. You can access PACER as long as you have a credit card to pay for any charges. And I believe it's $0.10 cents a page, and anything after $30 in a quarter's time. Uh, you'll get charged for plus the $30. But if you spend under that, if you just use it recreationally or for a couple things here and there, then you're not going to get charged and you get to see your charges as you go through it. Anyway, sorry, that's the quick lesson for PACER. Now, let's just jump right into the search here. I'm going to go to find parties. And the head attorney, it looks like on their website at least, for Higby and Associates is Matthew K. Higby. So I'm going to start off broad because that seems like a name that should be unique enough, uh, so I don't have to include the K, but we'll start off broad and I'll do Higby, and this is just in a party search on Pacer. So I spelled that wrong. Higby, and then first name, Matthew. And now I could put in the case type, but I'm gonna leave that broad because I wanna find anything that it finds. And the party role, I mean, he, he is an attorney, so it could go in as an attorney, but I wanna see maybe he's a defendant in the case, maybe he's a witness in the case, maybe whatever. So I'm just gonna leave that blank for now and hit search. I could search by location in advanced party search, but I think so, this will be good. Okay, so there we go, uh, Matthew K. Higby, and K is listed on Higby and Associates website, so I'm sure that's him. Uh, and there's a case number here, there's a case title that says Lisa Cop Coppola, Coppola? LLC versus Higby. Uh, this is New York Western District Court. 524-19 was when it was filed. Date closed 4-14-2020. So nearly a year later, like around 11 months later. So, um, And I know I said this already in the last video, but again, everything here is alleged. This is, I'm alleging that this is the correct person. I am not guaranteeing. I'm just going off what I see and making my judgment call based on that. So all right, let's click on case number and we'll see what we can find. I'm gonna go straight into docket report, run report. And we have some information right here. So what do we gain? We gain the plaintiff, Lisa Coppola. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm horrible with pronunciations. LLC doing business as the Coppola firm. We have uh, her attorneys represented by herself. So as the lead attorney, so uh, it looks like she is an attorney and Aaron Kathleen Ewell as uh, attorney to be noticed. Then we have the defendant, Matthew K. Higby. We have represented by Raymond, maybe, uh, NGO is the last name. And let's see, 
There is a Ray L. NGO of Council on the Higby and Associates website. So uh, it looks like that's Matthew's attorney. We have the defendant, Nicholas Youngston. Now, uh, I don't have this up in, oh, actually I do have it up, sorry. Um, RM Media right here. Uh, defendant Higby and Associates, Defendant RM Media. Now, uh, from what I've read, and I, I don't have that on screen right now, Nicholas Youngson is related or the owner of RM Media. I think that's what I found on Higby uh, and Associates, uh, one of their clients, but I don't want to say for sure just because I don't have that evidence in front of me, and I, I don't want to call something out if, unless I have the evidence there, but I, I thought that's what I saw. So let's move on. So we have the complaint, and that's always chock full of details. We have a bunch of other court documents here. Some things we're not going to be able to get, like financial sheets or whatever. Sometimes only the court can get that, or the judge or the, the attorneys in question can get that. So uh, most everything looks open. We have an order at the end here. So let's just start with the first one, and I'm going to open this up in a new tab. And this is the complaint from the plaintiff, uh, who is Lisa, to the defendant, Matthew and the... Uh, Nicholas Youngson and Ara Media and Higby and Associates. Higby and Associates being the attorney's agency that is said on their website to represent Ara Media, who is one of their clients. And like I said, I believe Nicholas Youngson is the owner of Ara Media. So let's go into the case here. Wow. Okay. So this is uh, quite a few pages here. I'm going to hit view all. And it looks like this is going to cost me $4.50. Usually you won't get anything that charges you more than $3. But if they break the documents up into se several documents, then they can charge you a little more. And then it all compiles when you do your search. So it's a little annoying because uh, it seems like a little bit of a scam there when they break it up and they compile it for your, uh, for your ease of use. But it's broken up so they can actually charge you more than the $3 max charge they say they charge you on documents. That's just my opinion. But... All right, let's click view document. I'll spend the 450 on this uh, for the purpose of education here. And one thing I always recommend, if you've ever seen any of my other videos when we're going over Pacer, download things immediately. Don't wait on it. Download it immediately because there is no grace period with Pacer. If your computer freezes, if you accidentally exit the tab you're in or the window or anything happens you accidentally click out of it you go you have to go and pay that 450 again and that can be that can add up especially if you have a lot of documents open so if there's a document that you have that you know you're going to want to see later um, and it's more than 10 cents download it immediately or you're going to be paying again if you accidentally get out of it or something happens or whatever so uh this is 45 pages for the purpose of this video don't worry we are not going to read this entire thing uh but i have downloaded it uh, I'm going to just try to scan through this and see if we can find out anything interesting. Let's look at the nature of the complaint here. And really, if I'm doing a fact-finding mission, I don't really need to know everything here. It might be worth reading, but I want to know what information I can find either about RR Media or Higby & Associates. All right, so plaintiff brings action as one of the unsuspecting victims of a fraudulent scheme. So I'm not... I'm not judging Higby right now, or uh, I mean, I may have my opinions or the client in this, but this is definitely, uh, this is a little salty here. It's written, it's written in a, a little salty way, but one of the unsuspecting victims of a fraudulent scheme in which defendants abuse the United States copyright laws by filing copyright registrations for effortless and mundane photographs and then labeling those photographs as free for reuse on the internet thereby entrapping innocent and well-intentioned people who mistakenly believe that the labeled for reuse photos can be used without attribution. Okay, so that's actually a lot of what I read online and we can get into some of those claims. Like I said, if you're interested in any of that, if you're interested in me doing more investigative videos, just put that in the comments below and I try to read everyone's comment and uh, respond if appropriate as soon as possible. Just uh, the only thing I'd ask is keep your comments played. I've had had to delete a few comments in other videos that are against companies. I really don't want anything rude, and I would ask that you uh, maintain a level of decorum in your comments. Even if you feel the uh, company in the video has not, I ask that you maintain that level of decorum. All right, so, and also keep in mind that the company may watch this video, and they can see everything that you write. So unless you have a completely anonymous account, be careful on what you write, especially if you have a case against you. All right, enough disclaimers, let's move on. 
uh, defendants have orchestrated this fraudulent scheme to, and this is what this is coming directly from the plaintiff here. Uh, defendants have orchestrated this fraudulent scheme to generate undeserved profit, typically seeking statutory damages of up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, unless and until their entrapped victims agree to pay monies to one or more of the defendants. By the scheme, defendants engage in harassing scare tactics intended to extract money from victims who settle because they don't know how to defend themselves. So it goes on. I'm not going to read all this here. If you want, you can pause this video, enlarge it if you need to, and uh, zoom in. All right, so now we come to some factual information. This is important, especially if you're doing a lawsuit against the company or your attorney is or whomever is, this is imp important information here. So it goes over the plaintiff's information uh, and she says she's a New York limited liability company with its principal place of business in Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. Uh, and by the way, I'm not saying that you should do this at all, uh, but it may not hurt to, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily bother this person with a phone call, but it may not hurt to reach out to a plaintiff in a case. In judgment recovery, we, we do that. We reach out to uh, parties that are maybe adversarial parties that might be able to lend some information uh, and help us out a little bit. So. Uh, that might be something to do to send this person an email and see politely, you know, see if she's willing to give you some information. All right. So upon information belief, uh, Matthew Higby is a natural person residing in the state of California and is licensed to practice law in the state of California. Uh, and it goes on uh, law firm, principal place of business. It gives an address there. What else do we have? Upon information and belief, defendant RM Media LTD is a company registered in the United Kingdom and owned in whole. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm sorry if you haven't been able to see this. But uh, company registered to the United Kingdom and owned in whole or part by its defendant, Youngson. Okay, that's what I said earlier. That's what I thought. I just wasn't positive. Uh, but anyway, even... It's still not fact right now. It's alleged fact because this is still the, what the plaintiff is saying. So RM Media conducts business through the United States via the internet. RM Media is controlled and operated, controlled and or operated by Higby and Associates and or Matthew Higby. Now, this is interesting because they say that RM Media, Higby and Associates, as I, from what I gather, at least, uh, it seems like they're saying that RM Media is their client. Um, now, this person is alleging that they are controlled and are operated by Higby. So that's going to be interesting to find out. Does Higby and Associates own RM Media or is it really just a client? So, or maybe I'm just reading that wrong. Again, I'm not an attorney, so maybe I'm just reading the, um, the definition wrong on that of uh, controlled and are operated by. All right, so upon information and belief, Youngson and RM Media have assigned full power of attorney to defendant Higby and Associates. And associates. Right, so maybe that based on that, then they're not the owner. It's just, it's worded a little weird here for someone that's uh, just, you know, um, just average at reading this stuff, understanding that. So, all right, so let's go on. Uh, okay, Defendant Our Media has its principal place of business in the United Kingdom, and the amount in controversy exceeds 75000 I don't really want to discuss the merits of this case too much. I want to, I want to more so find out information. So, uh, as a compliment to his law practice, the Coppola firm posts educational blog posts, and it gives the so that might be something to go to later to check out uh, the Coppola or Coppola. I'm, and again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that firm or hyphen firm.com, which is intended to educate the public about changes in the law. The blog posts typically are published on the firm's website and then shared to show uh, to social media. All right, so let's see here. The firm has strict rules of all the images used by the firm must be owned by the firm, created by the firm, or properly licensed for use by the firm or be royalty free. All right, so it sounds like this was under challenge from maybe RM Media, uh, one of their images. Uh, thus, when an image was labeled free to use, share, or modify, even commercially, the firm may post such an image to its blog without attribution and without a license agreement for the image because the firm understood the image to be free of use. Uh, this is precisely the manner in which the firm located and decided to use the five images that are subject that are the subject to this litigation. See images, see exhibit B. Okay, and it goes on. And again, this is kind of getting into the merits. I want to skip to 
anything that discusses uh, the actual uh, the actual firm Higby and Associates. So I'm just gonna, as I'm scrolling through this again, you can pause this if you want. You can always look this up on Pacer. Uh, if you need it, I can maybe upload this to, what's the website, Scribd, uh, I think, uh, but a, a host for documents and I can upload this. I might, you know, I might do that anyway and if you wanna see it. Uh, yeah, actually I've decided while I've been talking here, let's, uh, let's do that. I'm gonna upload this document, it is public record, so I'm gonna upload it to uh, a website, I think it's called Scribd, and you can upload documents for free. And I'm going to upload a document there. I will put that in the description. So scroll down and above the comments, you'll see the description. Hit see more. And that will be a link to this will be in there. It is a completely uh, public record document. So that'll be in there. You can click on that and read it for free. So let's move on. Uh, upon information and belief, defendants Matthew Higby and H Higby and Associates, counsel defendants Youngston and our media to join them in this pattern of racketeering. Right, so some definitely some uh, adverse wording there. All right, so demand letters using United Postal Service. Uh, let's continue. All right, so it talks about different violations. Again, this is a lot to do with the merits of the case. All right, so we have information about the Coppola firm. Uh, they demand jury by trial. I mean, no, <laughs> let me do that again. The plaintiff respectfully demands a trial by jury. Um, verification, okay, let's scroll down. So now we have the exhibits. Okay, so this is interesting here. This is a letter from Higby and Associates, a national law firm, they say, uh, and it shows the, maybe the bar license in each state and that Ray NGO and the bar license there, Melissa Higby, uh, right there, and Virginia Kostmeyer, Naomi Sariga, Sariga, and I did find some of these individuals on their website at Higby, what is it, uh, HigbyAssociates.com. Okay, so let's see, retained by Nick Yankson and our media, regarding a copyright infringement matter, as such, we have been appointed, yada yada, effective immediately, all communication must be forwarded to Higby, okay, so let's see, we have that. Of exhibit B. Okay, so this was a typewriter image. Uh, this is sexual, well, assuming the rest of it says sexual harassment. Uh, we have one that says sexual harassment and that they're on a sign. Mandatory. I've seen a lot of these images online and from what I've seen of these images, they do look like uh, fair use images. That being said, that's just my amateur opinion of what it looks like. So exhibit C. All right, so we have some more. This is uh, on its side here, but we have some more images. Okay, so this is actually the Google uh, shows the person uh, put in sexual harassment typewriter. Uh, you can see that in the first image. Labeled for reuse with modification was what it was put on Google. And that's actually an older Google image, or no, excuse me, an older Google option because I think Google changed it to where it's just Creative Commons or it's something else. Just my experience and it used to have all those things and now it's limited in options maybe there's still a place to get that but so this is where you do the google search or the this is where they did the google search and they found these uh let's get past these exhibits here okay so this is uh more evidence here that they're providing as evidence rm media and it gives some information about the company uh, it says Sweet 11, Stanley Grange, I can't pronounce some of this, but in England. Uh, registered in England, Wales, company number 101 or 10103 835. And it gives some more information there and it gives the specific links. So, and there's more. Uh, what does it say? Original author Nick, Nick Youngson, and it gives. Uh, a website there, original image, attribution, license, license permits. Uh, let's see here. So again, this is on merits and I keep saying I don't want to go there. It's just, it's really, it really interests me, but I'm trying not to go there just for time's sake with this video. Uh, free images, RM Media offers a small percentage of its stock for free under Creative Commons. Uh, please do not abuse the service. Um, no cost in return for a link to one of our media's websites. Huh. Uh, let's see here. 
So it's more information. Now, is it just going to be uh, the evidence or is there going to be more to this? So I'm just trying to scroll quickly. So excuse me, I just want to see if there's any more evidence in this document. Okay, so that seems to be it. Uh, again, those are more merits, but I will put that in an, in a document upload and put that in the description. So just expand that description out and you'll see the documents there. All right, so let's see if there's anything more we want to look at. We're going on 20 minutes here, so I want to—I definitely don't want this video to be more than 30 minutes. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else in here that might be interesting. And if I miss something, throw that in the comments, and I can always go back and do another video or provide that in the description, maybe update the description with the link there. I don't mind paying for it. I'll provide it to all of you uh, and throw it in a free document upload place. Actually, Certificate of Service by Lisa Coppola. We'll just, let's just quickly take a look at that. Uh, one page. All right, so it showed where the document had been served. So that's actually some information right there. So I'm sure if we went through a lot of information and all every single document, which would be a little pricey, but we went through every single document, we could probably find out more information. But I think we got a lot with the complaint, and that may lead you to future documents. Maybe you do a pace or search on the company itself or the other members of the. Uh, company, maybe you contact the plaintiff in this case and see if she would be willing to provide you any information. So uh, it might be worth doing all that if you have a case. So once again, if you have any questions or you have been contacted by Higby and you want to put a polite comment in the in the comment section, uh, please do so. And I, I try to read everyone's comments and respond accordingly. I hope you liked the video.